Hi everyone, welcome to a special movie themed Blender tutorial in which we're going to be recreating a scene from the first X-Men movie. Specifically, we're going to be making the 3D holographic map or 3D display which was used to display an animation of New York City in the movie. It almost looks like some sort of 3D printed display. We're going to be using the alpha version of Blender version 3 and geometry nodes. This is a longer tutorial than usual, so I've decided to split it into two parts. The first part of the tutorial will be modelling and texturing the platform for the holographic map. We will also be making a very simple city scene to display on the map. In part two of the tutorial, we will be using geometry nodes to display the simple city on the display. We will also be making a simple 3D wave animation to display on the map. I hope you enjoyed this extended tutorial and let's get started. So in the first part of this tutorial, we're just going to be making the platform for the holographic display or map to sit on. So I'm just going to delete everything out of the scene and I'm going to add a UV sphere. Just scale it up a little bit. I'm going to shade smooth. Let's go over here and I'm going to turn on auto smooth might actually add one level of subdivision surface and just going to apply that. Now I'm just going to go to the side view here, turn on x-ray mode and I'm going to delete the bottom half of the cube. So I'm just going to box select all the vertices at the bottom and go X and delete vertices. Okay now I just want to flatten out the top and stretch out the edges a bit so I'm just going to go into edit mode, I'm going to select the top vertex here and let's put on proportional editing and I just want to kind of smooth out that top a little bit and I'm just going to select this edge loop down here leave proportional editing on and I'm just going to it looks pretty good so I'm actually going to delete this ring here. I want to retopologize this section. So I'm just going to select that central vertex again and just select out to the area that I flattened and delete all vertices. Now I'm just going to select this outside loop here and I'm actually going to go flatten that out as well. And let's extrude it upwards. Something like that. And while we're here, let's turn on the bevel modifier. Let's just turn off the bevel modifier quickly, just hide it. Okay, so in the movie, they had these regularly spaced sort of indented lines around the edge of the platform. So I'm going to just try and do that. I'm sure there's a quicker way to do this, but I am just going to quickly select these edge loops here. And I'm going to allow uh, an interval of about 10 edge loops. Um, between these creases. So I'm just going to count across 10. Okay, so now we've selected these regularly spaced edge loops. I'm just going to go to the overhead view and I want to deselect these little uh, edges here. So I'm just going to go middle mouse button with the brush tool, just deselect these and have a look on the edges as well and you can see I'm actually going to start one edge back. So I'm going to deselect all of these as well. Okay, now we've got that and just do the same down on the bottom edge here. And I think I'll just turn off X-ray mode. Actually, it's probably a bit easier with it on. I think we have all the right edges selected. Now I'm just going to press Control B to bevel. Just give it a very, very small bevel. Something like that. And I'm going to press E to extrude and then press Z to lock it. And I just want to drag them down a little bit. Something like that. Just to give it a bit of detail. I'm just going to go to the side view and just tidy up these vertices here that we've extruded. So I'm just going to box select all the bottom ones. Actually, you might want to put it x-ray mode on. It 
doesn't really matter about these inside ones because we won't see them. That's looking okay. So now that we've done that, we want to fix up this interior platform here where the map's going to be sitting. So I just want to select the edge loop here and I'm going to extrude inwards and then extrude once more and then I'm going to press go back to vertex selection tool and I want to press M and merge at center. So now we've just tidied up the topology of this top platform where the map's going to be sitting which will make it easier to UV unwrap when it comes time to the texturing stage. Okay let's add a camera to the scene and just position it however you like and I'm going to add a just a backdrop for it. Let's just add a plane, scale it up and I'm just going to align it a little bit better with the camera, something like that. And let's drag this back face out a little bit. Uh, actually let's extrude it upwards and just going to add a bevel with control B and use the mouse wheel to add a bit more detail. Apply a smooth shader to it. Let's have a quick look what that looks like with the EV. And maybe let's add some textures to it. I'm just going to select that and I'm going to go to the shading tab. So we want to create two materials here. So the first one's going to be the outer material and we want to add one for the inner, we'll call it inner material, but it's the platform material. So let's go outer, let's just select all the vertices and go assign on the outer. Then we can use the vertex selection tool, just select that middle one and press control plus and just to select that all the vertices for the platform or all the faces for that platform and press inner and go assign on that one. So let's start working on the material for the outer region. So you can leave the principled BSDF shader here. Uh, let's add a noise texture, a color ramp texture, connect the fraction to the color ramp and let's apply the color output. Actually let's move these over, let's add a bump node, let's connect the color output to the height input of the bump node and connect the normal output to the normal of the principled shader. And assuming you've got Node Wrangler installed, you can just press Control T and that'll set up your texture coordinates node and the mapping node. I'm just going to connect the object output to the vector input of mapping. And let's change the base color. So in the movie, it was a slightly blue color. And let's maybe start with like that. Let's increase the metallic level. Let's try 0.9. Uh, now let's adjust this. So let's increase the scale of the noise. Let's try about 300. So you can give it this kind of bumpy rippled effect. I'm just going to decrease the strength. Let's drop it to about 0.1. So it still kind of looks metallic, but it's just got a bit of detail in the surface there. And let's just increase the detail a bit to 10. And let's shader about halfway. The black slider looks pretty good. Let's increase, let's play around with the roughness a little bit. So I might actually leave it where it was about. Let's leave it about point, I reckon about 0.45 looks pretty good. And I want to repeat this shader for the inner bit, but make some changes. So I'm just going to go highlight all and go control C, click on my inner material. Just drag it over, connect the normal back up. Uh, but this one time I want it to be like a metallic grey. Um, so let's increase the metallic level again. Again, I think I probably want to have a little bit less than one for the metallic level. I want to decrease the roughness a bit. So that's a little bit shinier. Probably want to decrease the strength to 0 0.05. So it's more like a mirror. Drop that slider down a little bit. Uh, 
Oh, that's why we're not seeing any detail, because the bump's not connected to the normal. So let's just drop the strength down again to 0 0.04. You can see it kind of looks like a mirror, but you've just got a bit of surface imperfection there. So you just come over to the bevel modifier here and go down to the shading tab, just put hard normals on, and you can just see that's tidied up that corner a little bit. And let's adjust this angle, make sure it's about 30 degrees. Let's just tidy that up a bit. And I'm pretty happy with that now as the basis for the platform for the holographic display. So make sure you save. Now we want to make something to display on the top of our holographic panel here. I'm going to load up a new Blender file here. So the way we make something to display on the map is to generate a texture map that then gets projected as a displacement map on the 3D panel. So I'm just going to create a new mesh. I'm going to create a plane, scale that up a bit, press Control A and apply scale. So we normalize out the scale values. I'm going to create a new camera. Just bring that out of the floor plane a little bit. Let's just zero out all these rotations. So now if we go back into camera view and I'll just zoom out a little bit. I want to go to the camera properties, change type to orthographic. Change our resolution output to, I'm just going to 1024 by 1024. Bring our orthographic scale up just so that we fully encompass the texture map. Something like that. So in the movie during the scene where they show this holographic display, they're displaying some buildings in New York City. So I'm going to try and recreate that just with some simple building structures, but feel free to import any um, structure that you like. So let's just start with a cube. Just bring it up so it's sitting on the top of the platform. Let's just scale it down. And I'm just going to click the top face and I'm just going to drag that up. And then I'm just going to extrude it up a little bit more and I'm going to scale in the top surface there. And let's just go merge at center just so it's got a, a triangular top. So it's something very, a very simple building. And let's just create a few more of these with a bit of variation. So maybe something simple like that. So now we're going to create a height map of these buildings so we can use it to displace the geometry nodes in the next part of the tutorial. So to do that, if you just go to the side view, check where your camera is, you're going to bring the camera so it's just at, just above the highest building, something like that. And we want to create a new material for these buildings. First thing we need to do though is change the origin point of all of these. So I'm just going to hide the plane for now. So I'm just going to select that bottom face of that building and I'm just going to go mesh, snap, cursor to selected, go out of edit mode, go object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor, and repeat that for all the buildings. Okay, so now that I have my buildings constructed, I want to make a material for it so we can bake a depth map to import into our 3D hologram scene. So I'm just going to create a new material. I'm going to delete the principal BSDF and create an emission shader. Connect that up. I'm going to create a color ramp. Connect that up. And I'm going to create a texture coordinates node. And finally a separate XYZ. And connect the generated output to the vector input of the separate XYZ and connect the Z into the color ramp because I want to look at the Z, the height of the, the buildings and change the color based on the relative height of these buildings. 
but I also want the height to be based on the distance relative to the ground plane. So I'm going to select for my object the plane. So I'm just going to apply this material to all my buildings and the ground plane. Now if we switch to viewport shading, so now you can see we have the shader applied, but the problem we're having here is that one particular color or uh, grayscale value doesn't correspond to the same height in the individual buildings. Because you can see here it's white at this level on this building, but it's darker gray on this building at the same height. We need to join all of these buildings into a single mesh. So I'm just going to shift select all my buildings and go control J. And now you can see the same height on one building corresponds to the same gray level on the other building. And then if we switch to our camera view, you can see the taller building appears white to indicate that it's higher than the lower buildings, which are a darker gray color. In the viewport shading mode, you can actually see that the ground plane is the wrong color. We want it to be black because black will indicate a low height relative to the, the buildings. So to fix that, I'm actually going to shift select the ground plane and the buildings and also include that in the join. Now, if I go to camera view, you can see the ground, which is black represents the ground level or zero height and the other buildings have a non-zero height. Okay, so let's just save that now. Now just go over to my render properties. So make sure your file output is set to whatever you like. I'm gonna call it building texture. So you wanna make sure that you pick a file format for your texture that has a high enough bit depth so you get um, enough grayscale values to represent the different heights of the building. So I'm actually gonna render this in EV. And you can reduce the render samples to something low like 15. I'm going to select my resolution to be 1024 by 1024, but feel free to increase that if you want to, to increase the resolution of the hologram. Just save and go render image. And there's the texture. So you can see I've got my final rendered depth map here. Now I'm just going to go image, save a copy, and I'm just going to call it building.exr. Thanks for watching part one of this tutorial. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel to make sure you're notified when part two of this tutorial is released.